Rich, congratulations on your gain in the first quarter. I'm curious as to how you had been positioned, how you managed to, to make a go of the current crisis. Well, thanks, Bonnie. It's, it's, uh, thank you for having me on your show. Um, look, I think that this crisis coming into it um, in, you know, February, we saw this as potentially being a real issue. I don't think anyone expected this to be the black swan event that it has become. And, you know, if you think about it, the market was at its highs on February 20th and certainly was not prepared for the fast and furious moves. Uh, and it happened in 14 trading days. Synctive as a firm, I mean, we took out our 08 playbook, similar to what we did when we ran Diamondback Capital and um, really focused on the volatility and on the capital that we had put to work and how to protect that capital, but also to be able to take advantage of the dislocations. So how did you do that, Richard? And have you changed positions now, or are you still sort of positioned the same way and continuing to ride that wave? Well, we definitely took a significant amount of... Um, capital down coming into the end of February and in early March. So we were able to actually be in a position where we were able to take advantage of a lot of the dislocations when there were the peak degrossing period, uh, March 15th, 16th, and 17th. And, you know, coming out of that period, I mean, you know, the Fed did a lot here. The government has done a lot and has definitely supported the market here. And I think we're still seeing a lot of volatility in the market, but you are able to take advantage of the dislocations. Now, obviously, you're a multi-manager. They're hard to build. We'll talk about that in a moment. But in terms of the types of positioning that you're putting on, are, is it mostly long? Is it short? You know, what industries? And, and are you looking at other asset classes, too? Well, multi-manager platforms are typically very diversified, and we are long-short equity, and we are spread out amongst every sector in the S&P, so we have exposure everywhere. And really the strategy is to the ability to isolate alpha. You know, our returns aren't determined on beta and, and market direction. So we believe that diversification helps isolate alpha and it gets you more of a consistent return stream with less volatility. So right now, all our portfolio managers are going through earnings is doing a lot of scenario analysis, taking in the information they're getting, and positioning themselves coming out of this as we see, will we get a recovery, will it be an even recovery, and the different scenarios that you know we're modeling in. How will fundamentals look over time, Richard? How do you imagine we'll come out of this, you know, in terms of the U.S. consumer, for example, or the Chinese consumer, supply chains and so on? That must be informing some of your positioning. Well, let's start with the positives. The Fed and the fiscal packages were massive, should help in many ways. The Fed reacted quickly, decisively to improve liquidity and support the market. And they, too, had the benefit of taking out their 08 playbook. So they were able to move much faster here than versus 08. Uh, people generally are doing their part in COVID-19, the battle to stay at home. And we're seeing positive results, flattening of the curve. And in some places, going back to work. I think what's the most important thing we need right now for recovery is the confidence that COVID-19 is under control and either through viral treatments or a vaccine. And we also need improvement in business confidence and sustainable business activity. What's very unlikely to me is an even recovery because the impact and the response is different between countries and even across states in the U.S. And we've never seen anything like this. So behavioral change to me is my biggest concern in the consumer. And the consumer represents 70% of the U.S. economic growth. No one knows what consumer behavior will be. Uh, is it going to change for a period of time or forever? What we have seen in China is the supply side has come back pretty much 100%, but the demand side is still slow. Uh, so there's a lot of unknowns right now, so you have to be very careful as we come out of this. But I think that there's a lot of unknowns here, and, and we just don't know everything yet. So are you short anything, Richard? Well, yes, because we are a 
market neutral strategy and that's what typically multi manager platforms are uh, we generate alpha from longs and shorts so our portfolio managers that specialize in in every sector they they have specialized coverage in sectors across the S&P they have longs and shorts and and they're trying to generate alpha from all those ideas any chance you can give us a few names or a few guidelines well, I mean, I can't give you particular names, but I would say that in particular sectors, uh, I would say right now fundamentals are probably driving more of technology, healthcare, where fundamentals are actually driving the price action of the stocks. I'd say the macro impact of this crisis is definitely causing a lot of volatility in spaces of the cyclical area, like the industrial space, the energy space, as we've seen over the past few days. Um, so depending on the sector that the portfolio managers are focused in, uh, fundamentals you know, might not be driving that price action. There's a lot of comparisons to previous eras, Richard. Do you see comparisons to 2008 for the hedge fund space? Well, I think that Look, in general, I think hedge funds have done a very good job here. I mean, for us, a lot of investors have reached out to us, given our experience through many significant market dislocations, and people want to hear how we navigated so well the volatility and similar to how we handled it in 2008. Um, 2008 was a completely different type of shock, and it was a financial system shock, and it played out of many years leading up to 08, where this has been just much faster. And I think that, you know, hedge funds did not capture the downside similar to what happened in 08. So they've done a good job. And I think multi-managers in general are in a good position. And we see tremendous opportunities to take advantage of the volatility right now and the dislocations. We think it's a stock picker's market. And we do think we're entering a period where passive and beta, which have been the growing products, will not be as attractive to institutional investors right now. So I just want to talk for a second about building, you know, a multi-manager as you did. A one billion dollar starting point is pretty good, you have to say. You also, you know, built out an artificial intelligence and big data team as well. So give advice to anybody out there maybe looking to start something. I mean, was it a good time to do that? How did you find talent? And now, will there be layoffs? Is it a, is it a good time to be shopping for talent? Yeah. Bonnie, I think that's a good, a good question and a good point. Uh, the environment right now to launch a single strategy fund today versus let's just look back at 08, it's much more difficult. We've seen the, the amount of funds being able to launch and scale much less than it was back then where multi-managers have grown, in some cases, AUM four to six times since 08. And, you know, what's happened here is that the cost to launch a fund, a single strategy fund or any fund, it is the costs are much higher, regulatory infrastructure, technology costs, and the capital and raising environment is much harder. The early stage investor profile has changed dramatically over the last 10 years. So what we're seeing as a, as a multi-manager platform, you're seeing more and more single managers coming onto platforms and in fact we use it as an area of recruitment for our firm is looking at a lot of single strategy managers that may not be able to scale um, will there be layoffs i think right now you know there has been layoffs i think we've seen a lot of um, dislocations in the marketplace over the past four to six weeks and there definitely is a tremendous opportunity from our end to acquire great talent right now.